Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Today we're going to try to build an aircraft that can satisfy a 160 kilometer altitude record. So I've sped all of this up in post because uh, sitting around for an hour while I build something is not exactly interesting. But, well, first we're going to size out this fuel tank. I've kind of already decided that we're going to go with the uh, AJ-10 mids for this build instead of our usual uh, XLR-11s. Although the design philosophy from there on out hasn't changed much. Get those two radial tanks and then some buffers. I can't quite get the alignment on these right, so I place them as individual parts. And then just start sizing tanks out. And then we'll merge them together to uh, get a nice little form factor. Also, changing them to service module tanks and filling them with a UDMH and N204. Um, as far as this uh, wing design, I always like things that are simple. So just uh, two quick wing pieces placed in the appropriate place and then uh, some elevons and a twin tail section. Now, uh, that was me just double checking with FAR. It looks like FAR is happy, which makes me happy, because uh, tooling around with Ferrum Aerospace is the bane of my existence. So being able to get it right literally on the first try was very, very nice for me. Uh, the other thing that we're doing here with this aircraft, as opposed to any of our others, is including an RCS system for trying to keep control once we get uh, higher out of the atmosphere, where there isn't enough air across these control services. Uh, I added a little hydrazine to the tank, now we're going to uh, adjust our drogue chutes in because we're going to need them. And these two chutes are going to be just uh, standard in case I can't bring down a safe landing. They're good to have as landings, especially not on a runway, are sometimes very touch and go. Right, just a quick last check of anything and let's take it out for a uh, very quick test run. Boom. Already out here on the runway because I edited out ridiculously long moving screens and the firing up of those two AJ-10s, which make for a very nice sound. A um, little trouble getting it up off the runway. This is not exactly uh, working the way I should. There should be more than enough oomph onto this. The runway does have a little bit of bumpiness. And, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it was because we lifted off or if we just hit another bump in the runway, but we lost both engines and our rear landing gear due to stresses. So, uh, <laughs> not exactly a successful test flight. We're just going to go ahead and throw off the chutes. And, okay, good. They catch. This would be a good test. I've had a problem before with the cockpit mounted chute auto cutting when the tail of the aircraft hits the ground and then it falls down and that cockpit explodes. Not the case here, but it turns out our auto cut speed is set still just a little too low. So we'll uh, revert that back to the space plane hangar and make some of these adjustments, I be, albeit by limiting the gimbal on the engines and lowering our landing gear just a little bit to give them uh, a little more clearance to work. I don't know why that happened, but we're going to set the auto cut speed on that down to 0.1 instead of 0.01. Get it out on the runway again and then go for our second test flight. Engine's firing up clean. It seems that we're on a, you know, a better place on the runway. Sometimes you tend to sink in by a little bit. Uh, we saw that with our first uh, like the, the PX, the PL, you know, was it just the PX1 or the PLX1? Anyway, our first supersonic aircraft had that problem of sinking about halfway into the runway, which was always just a little distressing. So we're hoping, yep, there it is. We're off the runway, nice and clean. So now we'll just try to put this into as much of a climb as we can. Uh, the flight plan here was to get almost vertical and then as we got to the higher end of our uh, ascent slope, to slowly kind of pitch it back and around over to the 270 degree heading mark instead of just 9-0. But a lot of this right now is just waiting for us to get high enough for these AJ-10s to see their full thrust. 
they're not really designed to be a uh, atmosphere engine. Uh, their vacuum thrust is marginally better, but the atmospheric pressure tends to drop off pretty quickly once you get above uh, 10 kilometers. So it's right around there where we should start to see full output from these little guys. So you can see I'm monitoring that pretty closely here, uh, watching both the ISP increase and the thrust increase as we get higher and higher in altitude. It's a pretty good angle. It's not going to get us very far away from KSC, which is also a good thing. But we're going to start pushing in earnest for our altitude run. A lot of this was just, is it going to work? Is it going to fall apart? Reaching around 11 kilometers now with just a little less than half of our fuel spent our serious pitch up because now the engines are starting to reach their optimal ISP and their optimal thrust. Moving very, very fast now. Already up to 15 kilometers altitude and still climbing very quickly. Uh, this test flight is actually looking pretty good from a runway takeoff under its own power. did not bother to bring up my flight data, and I'm not going to now. So it's requiring entirely too much concentration, but now that we're getting out of the thickness of the atmosphere, kicked on the RCS, and we're going to start trying to use that to get our heading to true zero, and then start our pitch over to 270 degrees, although we're pretty offset from that now. We're also pretty offset from the runway. adjustments there. Now, altitudes like this without air across the uh, control surfaces to keep us level, the kind of off-center center of mass has, uh, well, the, 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 the tail fins and parachutes tip our center of mass a little more towards the top of the aircraft instead of keeping it uh, true center. If you remember something like the X-15 had a lower uh, tail stabilizer also to kind of keep the center of mass uh, exactly straight in line with the center of thrust. Right, so now we're starting to really kind of fight that. The big disadvantage of these AJ-10s versus the uh, XLR-11s is that they do not throttle. <laughs> we don't have a means of really kind of fighting against this pitch other than this RCS system. And as you can see now, we're starting to kind of spin off of our Procrate vector while trying to keep that thing balanced. And it's it's just not working. Sorry about the dog. The one advantage that the uh, AJ-10s do have is infinite relights. So while we've kept it the fuel available is well under our five minutes of total burn time. If we can get back on that prograde vector, we can ramp those engines back in for a second. But that's all we've got. So switching it over back into time warp as opposed from real time, we're just going to ride this and see how high we got. Uh, despite the tumbling, 138 kilometers almost on the button before we start our descent back. Um, I've kind of given up any hope on regaining control. So we just let the air take it and point us straight down like a missile and then we're gonna start trying to pull up. As you can see, moving fast enough to generate a plasma trail. But Val's not scared of no G's. She'll pin it out all the way to about 14 and a half G's coming out of that dive which would crush any mere mortals. But not Valentina. She is a bona fide badass test pilot. But she's leveled it out and is now going to start making her adjustments after several victory rolls. I did not expect her to be able to pull out of that. But we're just going to use all this altitude and speed, put ourselves in line with the runway, and then just start to take it on home. 
she has a lot more speed than we would like. Uh, so, a couple of uh, dive and then climb and then dive and then climb to try to bleed off as much of this as we can. There's some small adjustments to our angle here. We'd like to come in as close to the runway as we can, but uh, we're still pretty fast. Now Val's gone ahead and dropped her landing gears. Just going to try a couple of quick S turns. These are far more efficient at shedding speed than uh, the dive and pitch maneuver. And, well, if you need to make corrections to your heading or your approach vector, that's the way to go. So, on approach for the runway, I still feel like we're way too fast, but it's a little late to correct now. But, yeah, bounce and even more bounce. This bounciness has been caused for more than a few problems. Um, yeah, we're, we're way too high and way too fast to put this down and get it to stop before we get to the end of the runway. So we're just going to throw out the chutes, pitch up to get us some altitude, give those things time to deploy, and just... Uh, let it sink very gently down to the ground. Now if you notice the time left here on our simulation time, uh, I think I may have structured this entire thing way too well. <laughs> I think that's perfect. See you next time guys. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you later.